And all I remember is afterwards, I had my shirt off and Louie came over and asked me how I was. I'm like, man, I don't know, man, my, my pec feels a little weird. And I flexed and my entire pec was underneath the nipple. I mean, there was, there was nothing above the nipple at all. And um, he told me... <laughs> what was the worst injury I suffered as a power lifter? <laughs> You know, as I'm sitting here, you know, the, the only thing that's going through my head right now is what injury set me back the most? You know, what injury did I have to stop training for the longest? It has nothing to do with what set me back, like what hurt my lockout or what hurt my squat or what spun into the next injury. Um, the only thing going through my mind is which one kept me out of the gym the most. That's kind of fucked up. Um, cause it shouldn't, you know, that, that really shouldn't be the answer or the advice to the answer that I'm going to give. The one that kept me out the most was when I, uh, ruptured my left pec tendon and it was out of the humerus and it was actually out of the humerus and muscle, but the tendon was detached from, from both ends. So they had to screw it in one, suture it in the other. And, um, that sucked. Um, that the, the pack fell underneath the nipple. It happened, it was, it was actually before I came to Westside and Louie was at the meet and I came down actually, I was, I was training with him a little bit at the time. So I came down to, to lift in the, it was a Columbus Powell bench meet. So I came down on a bench with, with those guys and pack tore about three quarters from lockout. Um, bar came down about took my head off but don't remember that you know all I remember is afterwards I had my shirt off and Louie came over and asked me how I was I'm like man I don't know man my my pec feels a little weird and I flexed and my entire pec was underneath the nipple I mean there was there was nothing above the nipple at all and um he told me ah you'll be fine you know you just you just pulled it and I like, pulled it the shit ain't there no more and I was still in college at the time so I went back to school and went to the school nurse because I found out after a week that I could, I could do like machine crap. I could do some pressing. The pec was huge, by the way. I mean, it didn't bleed. It didn't get black and blue. It didn't bruise. Um, but it was like twice the size it ever was. So it was actually kind of cool. Um, but I could not get the bar out of the rack to bench. You know, I could do a seated press and that was fine, but I could, I could not for the life of me pull that bar out of the rack. And it went on for a couple of weeks until I went to see the school nurse because I figured, you know, like anything else, it would just get better. And she told me I pulled it. I'm like, you're fucking kidding me. I mean, half the peck is gone and everybody's telling me I pulled it. And I think they were all kind of thrown off base because it did not get black and blue. It didn't bruise. There, were, there was nothing, no discoloration at all. It was just it was screwed up. It just was all under my nipple. And soon after I graduated, two, three weeks later, and then moved to Columbus. And then when I got to Columbus, I went to see um, Dr. Holzoffel, who's a surgeon here in town. And he looked at it and immediately told me the tendon was tore you know, did the MRI x-rays to make sure and told me that the tendon came completely out, that the muscle had rolled down. And the way it was explained to me at the time and the way I understand it is tendons don't bleed. So the, there was no torn muscle, the tendon was just gone. And that the, the success rate of coming back from having uh, a pec tear like that was not good but he was willing to go back and screw it back in because there was something to actually attach back in there. It was probably six weeks later, so a lot of the pack had already begun to scar down you know, on itself that was rolled down. So the best he could do was to stretch the pack out, screw it back in. And, but that put me in a sling for supposed to be eight weeks. I think it was two. And then right back as soon as I could back at Westside. But the, 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 the issue with, with that was 
Well, there were two things. The, the doctor told me I'd never bench 400 again, which kind of fucked with my head for a while. And um, once I found out that wasn't true, you know, because I did bench way more than that. The, the issue I had with that one was the scar tissue kept tearing back off. So within the 12 months of that surgery, I think I was back in his office eight times because I thought I retore the tendon. And what was happening is we kept, uh, I kept breaking off the scar tissue. And so there was a lot of, there's a big learning curve there as far as how to train for me, how to train around pec injuries, I, the hours and hours of conversations with, with Louie trying to figure out how to work around this, you know, and because the pack essentially is, it, it, it was not going to work. And so the technical changes that we had to make, you know, I moved from a thumb grip to a thumbless grip. I went to a really insane elbow tucked position. I did everything that we could do to get my pecs entirely out of the motion and put everything to basically take the chest completely out and make the bench press and shoulder rotation tricep extension, which we were able to do over the period of 12 to 16 months and ended up benching you know, 540 raw and then 610 with a shirt or something like that. So that was the worst one because that fucking scar tissue. And because every time it would, it would go, it was, it, it was at least missing one bench workout after it happened and then one or two of another seven days of slight rehab. If I tore it, I could tear it, the scar tissue, a month out from a meet and still do the meet and be fine. But if it happened three weeks out from a meet, I was screwed. I, was in, I had to go to the meet and bench 135. It wasn't enough time. So it wasn't so much a matter of, I knew it was gonna happen. It was, it was trying to figure out how to make it not happen right before the meet. And a year after that, we figured out how to make it never happen again, which is more than I wanted to spend time on this one video clip answer for. But it took, it took a while and it took a lot of help and it took a lot of you know, working with Louie to try to figure out how in the hell you, know, you can bench with really not using your packs. And, and, a, and a good doctor, I mean, it was a good doctor willing to listen as well. But that was the worst just because of the time frame and all the reoccurrences. It just sucked.